Hello, fifth graders from the Altoona School District. I am Mr. Little, and we are here together today to have a quick math lesson. Before I get to the math lesson, though, um, I want to tell you that I've been meeting with your teachers online um, in an app called Zoom. We've been having online meetings all week to try to get lessons ready for you. And I need to tell you a couple things about your teachers. First of all, they love you and miss you immensely. They cannot wait to get back into the classroom to see you. Um, the second thing I need to tell you is... Your teachers, who probably tell you, if they're like me, they probably tell you in class sometimes, hey, hang on, you need to raise your hand. Well, let me tell you something about your teachers. I've been in meetings with them all week, and they don't always remember to raise their hands. Sometimes they talk over each other. So when you get back to class and they tell you, you need to raise your hand, it's okay to tell them Mr. Little told you that they sometimes also forget to raise their hand because I saw it. Okay, on to math, everybody. Today, we are going to talk about fractions and specifically we're going to talk about how to add and subtract fractions so i'm going to start with just kind of a simple adding problem and we'll do one fifth plus two fifths now when i'm adding or subtracting fractions the first question i need to ask myself is are my denominators the same in this case my denominators are the same they're both five that makes it very easy when the denominators are the same you keep the denominator and you add the numerators. One plus two is three, three fifths. Three fifths is already simplified. I don't need to do anything else. That would be my answer, no problem. Okay, now let's move on to a more difficult problem. Um, I want to tell you I am erasing my whiteboard with paper towels because I forgot to bring home a whiteboard eraser. And I don't know if your parents have been out. I assume they've been to the grocery store while we're social distancing. Paper towels are not all that easy to find out there. So please, if you see my wife, don't tell her that I was using our paper towels to erase my whiteboard. Okay, now let's go with a little bit of a trickier problem. This time, let's go with one fourth plus two fifths. Now, in this problem, my denominators are not the same. I'm just kidding, it's easy fix. So when my denominators are not the same, We'll just start listing multiples of the two denominators. So I have a 4 and a 5. So I'll start with 4. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. Now I'm stopping at 20 because I know 20 also works with 5. 5, 10, 15, 20. Now I need to find my common multiple, and I want the smallest one, or least common multiple. So the least common multiple is 20. So now I'm going to write equivalent fractions that both have a denominator of 20. Now, in order to write equivalent fractions, you need to do the same thing to the top and bottom of a fraction. So in this case, with 1 fourth, I went from a 4 to a 20. How did I do that using either multiplication or division? Well, I multiplied by 5. So 4 times 5 is 20, 1 times 5 is 5, and my equivalent fraction for 1 fourth becomes 5 20ths. Same thing down here. How did I go from a 5 to a 20? 5 times 4. So I need to do the same thing to the numerator. 2 times 4 equals 8. So now my new problem is 5 20ths plus 8 20ths. Perfect. Now I just keep the denominator of 20. 5 plus 8 is 13. And I have 13 twentieths as my answer, and it's already simplified, and we can talk more about simplifying later. 13 twentieths, new answer. Okay, so far so good. I want to teach you one more thing about adding fractions, because you might get an improper fraction. So, let's try this problem. Let's do three-fourths plus two-thirds. First question I'm asking myself. Are my denominators the same? They are not. Need to make them the same. List multiples again. So we have 3 and 4. Count by 3s. 3, 6, 9, 12. Count by 4s. 4, 8, 12. So now I know that my new denominator and my equivalent fractions should be 12. Okay. Need to make my equivalent fractions. How did I go from a 4 to a 12? Multiply by 3. You need to do the same thing to the numerator. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 twelfths. 
down below, and uh, how do I go from a three to a 12? Times four, you need to do the same thing to the top. Two times four is eight. So my new problem now is nine twelfths plus eight twelfths. Okay, keep the 12, nine plus eight is 17. 17 twelfths is a good answer, it's a correct answer. It's not a great answer. We can do a little better. The reason it's not a great answer, it's an improper fraction. Improper fraction means the top is bigger than the bottom. So we can fix that. So I'm gonna give myself a little bit of room here and our problem got an answer of 17 twelfths. So there are a couple ways to turn an improper fraction into a mixed number. The first way would be to do the top divided by the bottom. So we can do 17 divided by 12. How many times would 12 fit inside of 17? One, one times 12 is 12. I subtract 17, take away 12 is five. So I have one remainder five as my answer. Okay, when I do this, the one, the quotient is your whole number, one. Your remainder is your numerator, five. And you keep the same denominator of 12. So my new answer is one and five twelfths. Now, one other way, one other way we could fix the improper fraction of 17 twelfths is we could make a model. And the good thing about me showing you how to make a model is I used to be a male boy. So it makes sense for me to show you how to make a model. Okay, sorry, that was a terrible joke. My daughter's rolling her eyes at me right now while she's recording. Anyway, let me show you how to make a model. So if I have 17 twelfths, 17 twelfths, what I could do, what I could do is make a model here. And I'm gonna separate this into twelfths. Okay, and I'm gonna make one more, and I'm gonna separate it into twelfths. I really wish I had chosen a fraction that didn't have twelfths right now, but that's how it goes. All right, and up here I'm gonna shade all twelve, so I have twelve twelfths shaded. Down below, I'm going to shade, that's twelve, this would be thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, 17 twelfths. So I have 12 twelfths shaded here. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 twelfths. Now I can just look at my model. I have one whole rectangle filled in. And then down below I have five twelfths filled in. One and five twelfths. And that is adding fractions. Now let's get to subtracting fractions real quick. All right. Subtracting fractions. So let's take three fourths minus one half. With subtracting fractions, it's the same as adding fractions, as far as the denominators need to be the same in order to do this. So right now I have three fourths minus one half. So my denominators are four and two, so I need to fix that. So I'll go down below here and start listing multiples two, four, and look at that. I, I already have common multiples of four. All right, now, how do I go from a four to a four? Times one. Same thing with my numerator, three times one is three. How do I go from a two to a four? Times two. Same thing at the top, one times two is two. And now I have three fourths minus two fourths. Same thing, keep the same denominator. Three minus two is one. One fourth is the answer. Let me give you one more subtraction problem. And then we are going to move on, and I'm going to put my dining room back together. All right, last subtraction problem. Let's say we have 6 eighths minus 1 fourth. 6 eighths minus 1 fourth. Okay, same thing, I need to get common denominators. So I have an 8 and a 4. I start counting 4 8. My new denominator is eight. All right, how do I go from an eight to an eight times one? Six times one is six. How do I go from a four to an eight times two? One times two is two. Six eighths minus two eighths is four eighths. Now I want to show you this one because four eighths again is a good answer. 
It's not a great high quality fifth grade answer. The reason is we could simplify it. Now, we've used multiplication to write equivalent fractions. We can also use division. So what could I divide a four and an eight both by? Well, I could use two, but there's something better. I could divide both of them by four. So if I do four divided by four and eight divided by four, it should give me, should give me equivalent fraction, right? Because when I do, if you have four over four, that's the same as one. And anytime you would divide something by one, you would get something that's equivalent to it. So four divided by four is one, eight divided by four is two, and my new answer is one half. All right, now two and a fifth graders, um, I hope this helps. Um, even more important than the math, your teachers want you to know we love you, we miss you, we can't wait to get back into class, and uh, we, we hope that you're making the most of your time and that you're safe and healthy. Love you guys.